Yes, SRO. Go, SRO. Roger, I have an IP for you from our computer. Okay. Discovery. 24 degrees, 44 minutes Roger north. Flight, understand me. The prime recovery ship, the USS Wasp, was on station some 600 miles east of Cape Kennedy as the retro rockets fired. The Wasp waited, as she had on four other occasions, for Gemini 4 and Gemini 6, for 7 and Gemini 9. Slightly more than 30 minutes to wait with her helicopters scanning the sky. The spacecraft is entering the Earth's atmosphere at 400,000 feet. We have a chance to make the last ride down with the crew, looking out the pilot's window. This film of re-entry was shot at six frames a second. We are projecting it at normal speed, 24 frames, so our ride will be just a little fast. Heat of re-entry becomes intense. Particles flake off the ablative heat shield and fly onto the window. The intense heat will now break off our communication with the ground for about four minutes. We are midway across the continent, near the Mississippi Delta. The crew has been coming in for 27 minutes. Communications blackout is over. A ground station talks to Jim Lovell. Houston, our data shows you're right in the money. Roger. Roger. Less than 10 minutes to splashdown. Main parachute sighted, in full view of the WASP. DOD Atlantic Chief uh, from the WASP. They estimate the range of five miles to starboard. They see a yellow, orange chute. Estimating altitude uh, 2,000 feet. The slow descent was followed down to the water by cameramen and relayed to the nation by television. Houston, we've got you on the boat too. You look good. Splashdown. The Gemini 12 flight is officially over at 2.21 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. It passes into history. The recovery mission begins. The WASP was almost alongside the spacecraft as it splashed down. Rescue swimmers were in the water with a flotation collar, ready to check in with the crew. Jim Lovell was the first to be lifted into the waiting helicopter. It returned immediately with a sling to pick up Ed Aldrin. Both were soon aboard and receiving the congratulations of the helicopter crew. There would be time later to summarize the Gemini program, to add up the major accomplishments we now take for granted. Rendezvous and docking, long duration missions, EVA, pinpoint re-entry. There is a just share for contractor, for Department of Defense, NASA, for flight crew and ground crew, and most of all for the man in the street for whom this program is ultimately designed and without whom it has no meaning. But this day belongs to Gemini 12 and its crew. We must not stint them. These men set out to do a job and finish that job thumbs up. Command pilot and pilot had added five hours, 28 minutes of EVA exposure to the Gemini record. Each established his own individual record. Jim Lovell has flown longer in space than any other man, 18 days. 14 days on Gemini 7, four days just behind him. Buzz Aldrin set his record of two hours, nine minutes on umbilical EVA at workstations. The crew increased our experience at tethered station keeping after successful rendezvous and docking. Finally, Gemini 12 added 14 successful experiments to the Gemini program, which has collected research data for scientists on every flight. More than 50 experiments were conducted on this program. In the tradition of manned flights, 
the Gemini mission flag is lowered for the last time at the manned spacecraft center. As it comes down slowly, we hear an echo of the words of the program manager. It is now time to go on to bigger things. And we will be able to go on with confidence because there was this program, and it was called Gemini. <laughs>